see that. I'm zooming in. I've had that since September. These blossoms that I picked. I didn't take it off the walk there. I'm sure. I didn't take it off the tree. I found it on the side of the road on a walk in September. These blossoms from last year, before it got cold. It's now late February, no, mid-February, sorry. And this was about mid-September, so that's five months ago that I picked this off of the road. And it still looks amazing. I don't know, is that normal? I don't know, I'm not sure. Anywho, I thought I would... I thought I would say hello. And I wasn't sure what kind of attitude or accent or vibe I should try and project. Um... Uh, I, I very much like, uh, being a posh, uh, toffee-nosed pom, you know, old chap and all that kind of thing, and, uh, used to read the, uh, Bertie Worcester books with Jeeves, Jeeves. Did anyone else see that, um, that light has... Trying to look for better light. It's amazing how light changes the way you seem. I I could look really good and look like death warmed over from different angles and different projections of light. I know that much. It's funny. Anyway, this is probably okay. I'm holding quite a heavy camera in my right arm, which is not ideal. Maybe if I put put it on something. Uh, let's see. And there I am. Uh, let me get my coffee. It's a funny thing, I used to only drink tea. I used to only drink tea. Well, I drank coffee a little bit. Oh, shit. This is not niet goed, as the Dutch would say. Or however they say, there's so much of the way they express this in expressions and odd ways of saying things. Well, they're odd people, so it's right. No, um, <laughs> um, I can see myself as well, which is quite strange in the viewfinder, so it's quite odd. I get a sense of my own derangement. Um, but, uh, yeah, what was I saying? Is it important even? Coffee... I only drank tea, really. I mean, I grew up in South Africa, which is, although originally had a Dutch influence, it was a British colony after the British kicked them out in about 1805. Um, and uh, I grew up with tea, and tea, milk, and the sugar, and that was a very typical South African um, but, uh, well, coffee is also popular, but, uh, especially with the English people. But I always drank tea, except when I was a student in CalArts in California in the 80s, I was drinking straight coffee with no sugar, which is actually quite strange, because a lot of my other habits were very, not very healthy. I was eating McDonald's even once a day at one, at one point, and I got, I'm shocked to even think that I did that. And maybe that's why I, if I see people that are doing that now. I don't want to be the boring old fart who says to them, no one who's 20 who's doing things doesn't want a boring old fart who's 55 to come to them and say, well, that's not very good for you, you know, or don't do that. Or, And I was smoking cigarettes. Uh, I had two years then of smoking one pack a day of Marlboro Lights mostly. Yeah, and uh, it's nasty. And I was looking at a... Um, but then again, I don't think anybody who exists in this world uh, wants to be told what to do, and it's their right. If they want to 
life is we're all good, we're all going to die, right? And apparently, at some point, it, it appears that's the evidence certainly supports that theory. And uh, there's this insane culture now, this particular correct culture, which is all about, you know, not you can't smoke. Smoking is the devil's work. You can't smoke anywhere. And meanwhile, it's the most hypocritical culture because there's all kinds of bad things in the air from pollution and um, even fluoride in the water, fluoride in fucking toothpastes. I mean, I used to get, I, I'm using now, the best thing is actually to get coconut oil, which is like a paste. And actually, I read this on the internet, but it works. And you put a little bit of bicarbonate of soda in it, to sort of gel it, and it, it, it's great. I mean, that's, and it's cheaper. <laughs> But I used to also use a toothpaste called Parodontax, which is, is sort of marketed as something that's more natural, but it's not. They used to have one where you doesn't have fluoride in it, and now you can't get it without, it has to have fluoride. I mean, it's like actually going backwards. And that's insane. And you think this culture, I mean, fluoride is toxic, <laughs> you know. And, and even the dentist who did my teeth a couple of years ago here in the neighborhood, asked me if I was using a toothpaste with fluoride and I, you know, I mean, it's just, it's the, the garbage, the garbage, as if it's necessary. But the funny thing with the coffee thing, so I drank tea my whole life and, uh, and then my mother passed on just over five years ago and, um, she had been always a coffee drinker because she's from Vienna originally and that's the culture. And uh, <laughs> she always liked her coffee. She was, didn't go crazy with it, but she liked a, a few cups of proper coffee. And about, I think literally about a month after she, she, she died, I started drinking, I just suddenly one day started drinking coffee. I didn't, it wasn't a decision I made. I just stopped the tea. And I started the coffee. It's just very odd. And I used to not keep coffee in my house or my place where I'm living, where I was living, like when I was in Amsterdam. And now I, I have tea, but I hardly ever use it. It's just it sits there, and I just it's and I only ever seem to want coffee. It's very odd, and I'm I don't I'm just going doing it. It doesn't matter. But and and you know, and I I I think everything in moderation. I think people are fanatical. I think that they're missing the point. People who are, you know, I think everything in moderation, I think a little bit of poison is actually good in moderation. I actually believe that. But the point is that it's not too much. But then again, we're not, we're all different. You know, some people can take more than others. And you, it's about knowing yourself, right? But, um, you know, I'm in a position where I would like to be completely pure. And I'm not. I'm getting better, but, but you know, uh, frankly, um, the, the circumstances I'm in, uh, I, I find it very difficult not to imbibe in something other now and then, um, just to, it's my choice, it's free will to me, it's not, it's not, a, it's not for the government to decide, uh, it's, we're all sovereign beings and, you know, you know, it's just, it's time we stop stop putting up with the culture that thinks it can dictate to us um you know and that's never been as bad as it's manifesting now and every time i'm forced to mask to go and shop i i'm raging inside i can't every time i just say chill out be cool <laughs> but every time it's just it, it 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 insults me on a soul level that i cannot explain and uh, I don't go to the shop I, I hardly ever go now to more to the main there's a supermarket that's the closest to where I live to the community which is across the road which is Albert Heijn which is like the biggest supermarket chain in the Netherlands and they are huge they they have at least half the market if not more um, anyway um, I don't I just don't go there because simply because it's big and so you have this huge conglomeration of and it's quite busy and you have a lot of people then to me masked which is basically 
it's singing an energy, uh, an anti-life energy. And it's just it's very disturbing to me. I mean, these are mostly just fine people. They're just following the rules. But the point is that when you cover someone's face, the brain, the, the human brain is designed... You can look this up. It's designed to decode uh, uh, faces. It's designed to... You get that? And once you take that away, it's actually very stressful. It's actually, it's actually provenly increases your stress level not to be able to decode another person's face. I mean, like I put this cartoon now on Facebook I've shared a few days ago where, um, you know, it's, the, it's the, the cartoon, the guy walking in the bank with a mask a few years ago and the guy at the desk said, I'm going to call the police. Now it's the guy at the desk wears the mask, the guy walks in without a mask and the guy says, I'm going to call the police. <laughs> right? Because, because the whole thing is inverted. It's all a satanic inversion. And if you think that's gobbledygook, well, fine, it's your right. But I've been doing intense research a long time, and I do believe that that um, this thing is real. And I do believe that, that, that it's a... I mean, the thing that they call... Uh, you know, you're not even allowed to say the 17th letter of the alphabet. They is it what everyone now says on the internet? Otherwise, YouTube uh, takes them down. It's insane. And this movement, which we will call the 17th letter of the alphabet, which the, the mainstream media, the fake news, has basically tried to make out as a terrorist organization. One of their great, which is absolute bollocks, because I read their posts for a long time, and all they were were just links to real news stories, and they were just all it was cryptic stuff about plans of the White Hats. But um, anyway, um, what was I saying? Um, there was one of the, probably the most famous quote of this movement is, "Nothing can stop what's coming. It's biblical," and it really is. I mean. If you look at if you look at what's out there right now, first of all, we can say the world over a year it's it's in a period of it's 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 a, is a there's a darkness that's descended upon the land, and this, and uh, we know this what this is, and um, a pestilence in biblical terms, and that's why I believe that that the solution is going to be biblical. I really think that we're, things are coming to a head right now. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of people who are completely unaware of that. They just think everything's business is normal. And I mean, it's absurd. I've got people, even in this building where I live, you know, you would think this was an independently minded place, but goodness, was, was I wrong? Maybe there are a few people like me. I don't know, because you're not allowed to hang out, are you? Not allowed to. I mean, they just followed the rules here immediately. I mean, to, I mean, I mean, forget about this ever being considered an independent community in my mind again. This is this is just a city, a council, a city of a Groningen council uh, housing project in my opinion. It's nothing. There's, there's, they don't have the right to call themselves an independent community. We we are completely under the lock and the key of the rules of the city council here. And 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 I guess that that was the only thing they could do. The people who run the place, who sit on the posterior, the um, are sort of running in you know, a committee, and I get if they didn't say that, agree with everything, then you know we'd have problems. I don't know, but I mean, it's insanity. We've had our, our whole community life has been shut down practically. They still do some takeaway food things sometimes. But I, it's just depressing because it's basically it's it's, a, it's again it's just an energetic signature of saying we're we acquiesce we bow down we are I mean it's 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 ludicrous I mean we could have just had our normal life had concerts gigs done everything normal and I bet you nothing would have been different maybe one person gets sick and they get better you know <laughs> I mean I mean basically it's very it's real common sense I mean. Someone just put a post up now on Facebook today, a musician from Cape Town announcing a gig. And um, 
I commented that, you know, <laughs> you know, people lifting their spirits and being in the same room and making music, well, <laughs> sounds dangerous, with inverted commas, um, wink. Because, I mean, basically, 10 years ago, if I had been feeling off and I knew I could be contagious, I would just simply stay home and I wouldn't go to a gig, you know, I mean, because I have consideration for others. And, you know, it's very simple. Otherwise, if you're healthy, you go out. And um, the, the, the greatest evil with this whole thing is that they've been basing everything on cases, but the cases have all been based on faulty testing. So it's complete, absolute, complete nonsense. The overall death figures are almost the same. I mean, as much as they try to hide everything. Uh, and I think we're at the point now where the cracks are getting wider and wider in the false narrative. People who follow the fake news. And um, I think it's just, it's just going to be more and more cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance. I'm seeing it everywhere. And, and confusion. I mean, of course, we still have here in Groningen, I mean, these people have been completely, these younger ones especially, are completely brainwashed by the uh, European Union uh, brainwashing that's obviously happening in schools, subtly and not subtly. And it's been happening in America, they changed the curriculum there. There's no doubt that America is getting very scary, what they've been trying to push there culturally, cancel culture. Um, and there's still these zombies biking around in masks and stuff, and even from the building you have in the community. And I've got no qualms about calling them zombies because that's what they are. There's no... I mean, basically, this just comes down to basic common sense. No human being with basic common sense really believes there's any reason to mask while biking in case you catch something that, if you do catch, is like a flu and you have a 99.7% chance of recovering. I mean, if anyone thinks there's logic to that, well, <laughs> I don't know where, where their head is inhabiting. It just shows me they've just blindly accepted authority. And, and, and to me, the authorities in this country and in this town have proven they are completely unworthy to be authority. And, and the sooner they're taken down, the better, quite frankly and replaced with people with integrity who are looking after the real welfare of people. Because this whole thing has been done on the pretense that it's for, for our welfare. That's the insane thing. It's based on the... It's they're being fear-mongering, working on the fear of people. This is how they've got their way. Um, so, I think that there's going to be some earth-shattering stuff in the next few months. I, I just don't see how there can't be. Because it's got to the... Things have come to the head now. Because basically... You've got the globalist and New World Order Great Reset um, bunch, criminals, um, you know, Illuminati, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and in theory, they have their man in power in, in, in uh, America, but those of us in the know know that it's really just a faux thing. Maybe he has power in some domains, but the bottom line is... Um, and he's just a figurehead anyway, he just, whoever's calling the shots. But the bottom line is that uh, the, the military is, is not with him, or fundamental sections of the military. Maybe some sections, but fundamental sections are not with him, in my opinion. And um, I think there's going to be some very, very... I mean, basically, they're giving it a chance in the Supreme Court again. I think it's tomorrow. And maybe next week again, they're giving them a chance to look at the evidence, but I don't... I doubt they will. And I've got friends, like these Facebook friends who are basically mainstream adherents in their viewpoint, and they basically, you know, think anything that's outside of that is not valid or not worth looking at. But, but um, they're saying, well, you know, he's trying, he didn't present the evidence, he presented nothing. I was saying today, no, they, re they didn't let him present the evidence. I mean, it's, ex it's extraordinary the extent to their, the way they deceive people's perceptions of things. And uh, uh, the most important thing for any conspiracy to function is to is to be able to influence people's perceptions. Um, that's what David Icke was saying recently in an interview, and that, that's so true. Is that once you've got once you've got the thumb on the people's perception of things, what can is possible and isn't possible, then then you've got them. Um, but uh, 
the darkness runs very, very deep, I'm afraid, I believe. Um, and, you know, you, there's a lot of stories now of under, deep underground bases. Of course, stuff that would never make into the mainstream in a million years. They'll hide it at all costs. But, but under, under the, even under the um, White House or in Washington, D.C., and, and uh, diabolical stories, you know, and you can dig deeper if you want yourself, but, but in unbelievable trafficking, child abuse, uh, stuff that no reasonable, rational, rational, loving, compassionate human would ever tolerate for a moment. So um, even the fact, even if I'm wrong about the stuff, I, I want to make sure, turn a, leave no stone and turn to make sure that it isn't happening, because if it is, we, we, we better bloody do something about it immediately. Otherwise, who are we? Where are we at? If we tolerate that, if we, you know, and, and all they will do is sweep under the carpet the, the, um, the fake news, obviously. So uh, it's one of the great legacies of um, Donald Trump's presidency is that he, he, he really wanted to fight this scourge. And he said so many times. Of course, distorted, ignored, by the fake news, there's no surprise there. So I will leave you with that and hope you enjoy the rest of your day or evening.